Hi, everyone. Welcome back. It is a beautiful day in my neighborhood. It's going to rain like everything tomorrow, but today we're good. So as soon as I possibly can, after I do my errands and this fabulous video, I'm going to go outside for a minute because I think it's going to be like in Canadian in Canadian uh, temperatures, uh, 15 degrees, which is warm. So <clears throat> for those of you just joining me, uh, because you are a recent arrivee from someplace, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. Welcome. I'm Abby Haggard. This is my office. Um, we, we are heavy on the orange and the fascinator hats and the shoes and um, the costumes and stuff from my life on television because I am doing these videos with you to talk about how we reset how we don't have to chase, we don't have to become, it's how we reset. It's how we, we, you know, move the couch from underneath the window and change the pillows. We don't need a new couch necessarily. We don't need a good morning, Freddie. How nice to see you. We don't need to chase the dream. And the reason we don't need to chase the dream is the dream is ours. We are the dream. It's already here. We just haven't noticed. Mostly we're facing the wrong way. And there's a lot of conversation going on about, you know, manifesting and reaching for higher energy and doing more to be more. And God bless them, everyone. They, they're, they're slightly off track, slightly off the mark. In the first place, when people tell you to just do it, it's unhelpful because they're not telling you how. If we're not doing, it's not because we don't want to. It's because we don't have the instructions. So just, 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 okay. Lose the word just. Lose the word just. Start the sentence without the word just. Do it. How? What do you mean? Do it. Again, how? The, the answer is, is, hidden in a couple of things it's it's hidden in the why and the what and the how and the reason so many people just just tell us to just do it is that they don't know the how they either were never taught or they were taught something that doesn't work or they forgot <laughs> good morning beautiful soul sister of mine <laughs> good morning susan so so here's the thing I want to talk about today. I want to talk about, so in the, in the little quote above the thing, I, <laughs> above this video, if you're looking, uh, well, it's there. And it says, no matter how much lipstick you put on it, a pig is still a pig. You can't just add, just add to something that's wrong. And that makes it right. If, if, you, if you made the cake with salt instead of sugar, putting more icing on it is not going to change the cake. I'm telling you that from experience. What we want to talk about is the subject of this video today. Unlearn and relearn before learn. Good morning, Charles. Why we have to unlearn and why we have to relearn before we can learn is because, as Susan discovered this morning, you cannot, your brain cannot do two things at the same time and get it right. Get it right. You, you, you must focus on the thing. <laughs> like posting, write a book, right? And so when, when we're not aware of the hidden loop tape, when it's been with us for so long, it's just it's just the way things are. It's just who we are. That's wrong. And I'm going to tell you a story that I used in one of my uh, one of my one woman shows a long time ago. I was I was writing a sketch about a woman who had chosen to be a captive, had chosen to be helpless, had chosen to play the, the victimhood role in her life in order to have everyone look after her, in order to have people take care of her. And it took her most of her life to realize that she had allowed herself to live in a cage. She, she thought it was a safe space. It wasn't, it was a cage. 
And so here's a story that I that I told the audience, and it it was really it it was very moving. And the audience didn't see it coming because they expected everything I was doing to be funny. And sometimes, you know, if you want to set up funny, you say something profoundly warm and important and valuable. And you give everybody that warm space in, in their hearts. And then you say a funny thing and then they get to laugh and it's magic. So here's the story. And it's true, by the way. Many, many years ago, in order to uh, get uh, monkeys from the jungles to populate zoos, uh, they couldn't, they couldn't trap the monkeys because then they'd be uh, damaged. The monkeys would panic. They would, they would um, harm themselves or they would die. So um, <laughs> what, what the process was uh, insidious as hell, what the process was, is they would drive into the jungle with these very large clay um, barrels, very heavy, and they would they would fill these barrels with dates, and the barrels had a very narrow a very narrow neck. The neck was so narrow that a monkey could get its 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 hand paw in as long as the hand was like this trying to do that <laughs> sock puppets as long as it was like this they could get it in but they would be in the jungle they would smell the dates they would come out of the into the clearing where the where the barrels were they would smell the dates and they would put their hands in and they would grab a fistful of dates and try to pull them out and it was because they had their fists full of dates they were trapped they actually trapped themselves because they wanted the dates and they were not able, because of their fixation, their focus, or their, you know, their cause and effect was not developed in their brain, they were not able, the ones who stayed trapped were not able to comprehend that I need to let the dates go. They, they, the ones that weren't capable of, of uh, collaborative thought were not capable of realizing that if a bunch of us got together and tipped the barrel over, we, the dates would spill out. The ones who were fixated on the dates had their hands in there and they would scream and they would jump and they would, they would run around in circles around the barrel. But they wouldn't let go of the dates. And when the um, collectors came back, the monkeys would be there. Now, did they look damaged? No. Were they completely traumatized? Oh yeah. They were completely traumatized because they had come up against something quite uh, remarkable. They had come up against what I need is going to stop me from living. What I believe I need, what I, what I am prepared to sacrifice everything for is going to stop me from living. They, they, that's what happened to these, these monkeys. And so, you know, what, what was finally recognized over the years was that when people came to the zoos to see the monkeys, the monkeys be behaved in a very um, uh, dramatic manner because, because they were dramatized. They were, they were not normal. They were not behaving the way they did in the wild because of that episode. So I'm telling you that story. And, and by the way, you can imagine when I told that story on stage, it was like you could hear a pin drop after. And then I explained that this, this story was the story of this woman that I knew and, and what had happened to her and what she was prepared to do and, and how the story ended. And it, it wasn't happy. And, and so the reason I'm sharing the story, even though I want this to be a very, I want this to be a very positive and exciting video for us today is we need an anchor point that is absolutely true. That is absolutely how they trapped those monkeys. And it wasn't something the, 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 the men did. It was something the monkeys did. It was something that they fixated on. And the, the way I want us to hear this and realize this for us in our pivotry moments is that the stories we grow up with, the stories we're told as children, the, the stories we hear 
or we think we hear or the, the behavior we think we see is playing on that loop in the back. It's keeping us stuck with our hands in that jar. It's keeping us holding on to something that we believed was true, that we believed we deserved, that we believed, <laughs> thank you, Frank, um, that we believed was everything we ever wanted. So while that loop tape is playing in the back, and while we are reacting to that loop tape the way we have always reacted to that loop tape, which is, by the way, completely subconscious autopilot, we can't hear what's being said to us. We can't believe what is being said to us. We can't claim and own and celebrate what is being said to us, what is being shown to us as true, because what is here right now contradicts what was. And the reason what was is so powerful is because we're the one hanging on to it. It's, it's not the power of some distant past person. It's us. We are holding on to it. We are holding on to those dates. We haven't realized that we can let it go. We haven't realized that we can get together with similar people and share those stories and say, oh my God, I know. And did you this? Oh my, you too? We're not aware of that. Why not? We can't hear possibility. We can't, we can't feel the excitement. We can't completely entirely believe what is being said to us, even, <laughs> I was gonna say, even by somebody like me. Now, the reason I was saying that, and I am saying it, they can't even believe me. Why would they believe me? Because I'm the most colorful person in the room? No, because I am the poster child for overcoming and becoming and becoming again. I am the instruction book. I'm walking here and I'm right in front of you and you're hanging out of those dates. And I can't get you to let go until you're ready to. You have to be ready to unlearn the lesson, relearn why you're looking for change. Good morning, Eddie. Nice to see you. It's, it's all on, it's, I'm, I'm standing here. <laughs> I'm just a girl standing in front of you asking you to let go of the dates. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Viking therapy, boof. So here's the thing. Here's the point. Overcoming and, and rebecoming. Re re so it is it is not overcoming, Eddie. It is it is uncoming, un that. Not 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 beating ourselves up for it. Letting it go. Setting it free. Thank you for the memories. Gosh, remember those days when we all hung out in the clearing? with our hands in those barrels of dates, good times. Yeah, okay, or, or not. It's not overcoming. We're not fighting this. This is not, there is nothing about pivotry in motion that is a struggle. Pivotry in motion is, is exercises in letting go of. <laughs> Thank you. So, so that comment you made, Eddie, overcoming plus re-becoming is pivotry, not true. Letting go, setting free is pivotry. Letting go, setting free, being ready. And by the way, oh, look, there's opportunity. What was I facing this way for? That's pivotry. So pivotry is a state of mind reset. It is not a physical move. It is a, it is a mindset reset. Do I have to listen to the story that my dad told me? You know, my dad always said I could be a scientist when I grew up. 
I was reminded of that this morning when I posted the the, the Teddy Ruxpin uh, cartoon clip, because one of my voices in the Teddy Ruxpin series was uh, Eunice, the um, 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 the um, scientist who uh, had a special fondness for um, a, a gimmick, and <laughs> and so uh, and when I was saw the cartoon, I thought, yeah, good old dad. So all my life, very very young, my dad was saying. My dad was saying, you could be a scientist. You could be a scientist. And I, you know, one day, one day later, I said, because, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not math, right? I'm not chemistry. I'm not math. I'm not, I'm not any, of the, any of the linear stuff, unless I absolutely have to. <laughs> it's, it's scientists, you know, you don't see them sort of writing novels and wearing feather boas and, right? So it's, daddy. Daddy, what 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 is it about me that that makes you think that I could be a scientist? <laughs> and my father said, because you ask why all the time. <laughs> I'm curious and I'm inquisitive. Yeah. And apparently <laughs> very high on the annoying scale. Why daddy? <laughs> but why daddy? <laughs> so I want to, I want to give you a little, a little hack, a little hook. Okay. This happened in a conversation the other day with a client of mine and uh, my dad was an amazing man. Charles Cox, you have no, idea. <laughs> yes. In the dictionary. Yeah. Under the word amazing, there's a picture of my dad, but overlaid on the top of it are the letters OMG. <laughs> my father was extraordinary. So, a conversation with this client of mine who, who I admire, I respect, I appreciate, and <laughs> I keep saying, what is wrong with you? Are you listening to you? Here are two hooks. If you want to, you can write them down so that you remember. Here's how you know you're not entirely present and listening in this moment and responding in this moment and owning this moment. Here's how you know. You say, one of two things when someone tells you something. They're telling you how to do something. They're inviting you to do something. They're offering you something. And here are the one of both answers, one answer. These are your answers. That's how you know that you are still listening to the loop tape. Ready? Oh, I know, but. Second one. Yes, but you say, oh, I know, and you shake your head, oh, I know, but, and you usually lift one shoulder, oh, I know, but, same thing with the other phrase, y yes, but you're, you're, deleting what is being given to you because you're listening you're listening to the loop tape you're clutching that loop tape to you the question why is easy you feel somehow deeply that that loop tape has kept you alive. That loop tape defines who you are. That loop tape keeps you part of your tribe. And, and the thing is that at one once upon a time, it did. It doesn't mean it does now. You know, every so often your computer says update. Yeah, there's a reason it does that. The reason it does that is because what was working then is no longer good enough and they have created an improvement. Just because the tires you've bought for your car 10 years ago were great doesn't mean they're great now. 
Maybe I could draw lines on them so it would look like they still had tread. So the question is, how do you get rid of the loop tape? And I was going to show you. You write it down. You write it down. You get a piece of paper and you write down the thing you were told. If you're telling it to me, I'll say, okay, get a piece of paper, write down what you just said to me. Why? You know what? <laughs> Don't make me come over there. Write it down. Write it down. They write it down. I say, okay, now I want you to read it to me. I don't want you to tell it to me. I want you to read it to me. So they read it to me. And I say, and which part of that is true about you today? Are you in fact, well, no, but I, you know, well, no, but are you still, was your mother, father, brother, sister, boss, teacher, girlfriend, lawyer correct did that actually ring true <laughs> no then let it go how do i let it go are you looking at it is it true does it work no then let's write you a new one let's write you a new one you don't have to believe it yet but write down the new one what is the new one what does the old one say a woman can't make it without the support of a man Okay. You really think that? Well, no, no. Okay. Okay. What, what would be another way of saying it? A woman can't make it without confidence, passion, hunger, determination, raging boredom, <laughs> a need to fit into that dress and I don't yet. Write that down. That's the new, that's the new story. That's the new lesson. That's the new loop tape. Do you see it? Do you see it? Yes. It's written down. You see it? It's on the page? Yes. Okay. Then draw a line through. Physically draw a line through the other one. As you draw the line through, say this. Is it true? Or does it need to be true to keep me stuck? Draw the line again. Is it true or does it need to be true to keep me in a familiar space? Draw the line through a third time. Is it true or does it need to be true because I'm stubborn? Look at the new one. How does that one ring true? We have to unlearn something we accepted as gospel. We have to let it go when we can see it's not true. We have to relearn a very, very valuable lesson. And the lesson we have to relearn is that everything changes. Everything. Trees get taller. Weeds grow all over the lawn. <laughs> it gets cold some months. It gets warm in others. The house is a mess all by itself, no matter how often we dust it. Things change. Everything changes. Even when it dies, it changes. So if everything changes, if everything changes, how can the lesson stay the same and be true? It can't. It can't stay the same and be true if everything changes. Who we are and how we are defined changes. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day about how, how recently 
we had we had telephones that were attached to walls. I know you young whippersnappers are saying, tell me more, Grandma. <laughs> You'll say it from a long way away because I will hunt you down if you say that. Um, yeah, and you know what? We didn't we didn't have um, we 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 didn't have an ability to just do this. If we wanted to see somebody, we had to go see them. We had to go and see them. Couldn't do this. Not that long ago. Not that long ago, we didn't have a microwave to reheat things or cook things that did it really fast. Not that long ago, we had outhouses and the toilet was outside. And we had a little chamber pot that you tossed out. Not that long ago, nobody had gone to the moon. Not that long ago, not that long ago, everything was different. My parents grew up in a time of prosperity after a terrible world war. They found, they believed, they understood that in that wake of war, in posterity and prosperity, sorry, posterity, in prosperity, the sky was the limit, anything was possible. And that's what they taught me. A generation before that, very little was possible. Everyone knew their place. We don't do that. Yes, but who are his people? It's my grandmother. Things have changed. So the loop tape in your head, I have attachment issues. I don't know why. I don't know why. I wish, I wish it was like everybody else who just loves being in close proximity and they just, you know, they love being intimate with each other. And I and and I'm talking to this client and I said, what? I just, you know, I wish I could have that happiness. And I said, do you have any idea? <laughs> you clearly have no idea <laughs> about the real world. Well, I, you know, if I could just, I, I, I mean, I, 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 I like people, but I don't, I don't, I feel claustrophobic when they're near me. And I said, those are attachment issues. How do you know that? I said, well, because I was raised in a situation that very, very closely approximated adoption. When, when I was born, my mother was ill. She had to be in hospital for the first year of my life. And I was raised by my aunt and uncle for the first year. And then I came home. Greeted by my parents, year old me saying, who are you? I have attachment issues. I'm clearly attached to shoes and hats and whatnot, but I have attachment issues. I'm aware of it. My my father, you had a remarkable father. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any, you have any idea how many, how many problems that has caused me? Because, you know, you girls always look for somebody like their dad. Boys always marry someone like their mom. Yeah. <laughs> Took me a long time to realize what I was doing. Holy crap. Things change. We change. Rules change. Expectations change. Needs change. Therefore, therefore, the old story, the old lesson, the old blueprint that we on autopilot follow is the wrong one. But is not the common denominator. No. Just is the common denominator. Just. Just is the common denominator. Because everyone feels that somewhere there is a secret shortcut hack if they could just find it. No, there isn't. 
No, there is. There's a great meme. Have you seen it? It says what people think success looks like, and it's you know beginning success, and it's a straight line. And then the next one is what success really looks like, beginning success. Yeah. If you if you are reaching for something and it's not working, this happened. This happened just the other day. And I was winding myself into a pretzel inside a pretzel and getting more annoyed every iteration of the thing I was trying to do. And at some, and it was like, I don't know, 10 o'clock at night, I'd been working at it all day. And I suddenly, little voice said, you realize, <laughs> you realize there's a reason this isn't working. Me and my inner voice. Oh, yeah, easy for you to say. You're just sitting there watching me, eating popcorn. The reason it isn't working is I wasn't supposed to do it that way. Okay. Who said I should? Some guy, some, I don't mean a male, but somebody said, well, you know, so we all, everybody does it that way. Okay. Back in 742, Someone said to the Vikings, everybody does it this way. And the Vikings laughed and laughed and laughed. And then they conquered the world. So here's, here's the, the important thing. If it's not working, we're doing it in a way that is flawed. Trying harder. <laughs> people <laughs> used to happen in Europe all the time. Go to a country where they're speaking a language that is fascinating to listen to. It doesn't make any sense. And you know when they're trying to make you understand they talk louder? I mean, North Americans, we go to Europe and we're speaking to people who speak something else. When we talk louder, when you're talking to a child and they don't get it, and we talk louder, we say exactly the same thing only louder, and the kid looks at us. <laughs> when, <laughs> periodically in my life, I have been educated, uh, schooled by technically savvy people. <laughs> and they say a sentence to me in which there are words that I have no clue as to their meaning. They'll say, you know, lead in words that suck me in. Here's an idea, they'll say, well, I get that. And then they'll say, Gerspunkel. And I'll start blinking. And, and I will say, I don't know what that means. And so they do this. <laughs> Here's an idea, Gerspunkel. And I say, I don't know what it means. Gerspunkel. And I say, brick. Why are you saying brick? That's what I'm going to hit you with if you say that word one more time without explaining it to me. Well, everybody knows what gerspunkel is. Clearly not. And then they have to just break it down for me. Just translate it for me. Not slow wired differently. Capable of linear thought? Certainly. Certainly. Prefer linear thought? Nah. The swooping is it. So, story today. No matter how much lipstick you put on a pig, it's still a pig. No matter how many excuses you come up with, the story that isn't working is still the story that isn't working. No matter how many times you say, if only, oh, I know, but, but no matter how many times you put your fingers in your ears and go, la, 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 la. So you can't hear me. The story still isn't working. 
no matter how many ways, with your fist in that jar of dates, you run around screaming. It's not going to work unless you change the way you're thinking. Unless you take a step back and breathe and say, what is it she keeps saying? What is it that I keep saying? Why isn't it working? How do I know I'm doing that? Because I keep saying, yes, but yes, but. I'm going to tell you why, but, okay? I'm going to tell you why for all of you, including Eddie. But is a negative. But is, but is a disclaimer. But creates cognitive dissonance because it is about to give you two opposing things to think about. Every time your brain hears the word but, it automatically and forever deletes whatever it was that came before it. Are you interested in going to the movies with me? Oh my God, I'd love to, but I need to. The person who asked you, are you interested in going to the movies with me, doesn't hear, I'd love to. They hear but, and then they receive and retain the reason why. Remove it from the sentence. I'd love to. I have to wash my nylons. So the nylons are more important than the movie. Yeah. I have to clean the house. You can't clean it tomorrow. No. Okay. Fair enough. You have told me your priority. Everything after the word but is your priority. Why? Why is it your priority? Because it goes with the story. When were you told that story? In 742? Why are you hanging on to it? Why are you insisting it has to be true? That's the question. Why must it be true? I don't know why I have it. Yes, you do. Yes, you do know why. You do know why. How could you know? Because you've told me. What have I told you? So I tell them back to them what they've told me. Did I say that? Mm -hmm. Oh. Here, here's an idea. Conversation. Very common for military kids. My dad was really, really authoritarian. He was really strict, really, really strict. Everything had to be done by the book exactly. Really? Yeah. Oh my God. Sometimes, you know, you just like, you could, you couldn't, you couldn't break a single rule. Did you hate it? Are you kidding me? Of course I hated it. Okay. Why did you join the military? Your dad was authoritarian, authoritative. He was, he was in the military. You hated every aspect of it. Why did you join the military? They're not connected. Abby. Sure they are. Sure they are. Because you learned that your life, you grew up in a life where everything was organized and constructed and straight lines and predictable and very, very clear. That was your normal. When you had an opportunity to step, set yourself free, you chose your normal. You weren't taught anything else. You weren't taught how to be a painter or a hang glider or, or, or anything like that. You were taught how to live in a restricted, restrictive, organized, straight lines with vast penalties world. That's your world. What did you do when you grew up? Walked into your world. Oh my God, how did you know that? It's your story. You tell it to yourself in your head all the time. If you need to tell it, if, you, if you're tired of telling it, go home. Your dad will still behave that way. Your mother will roll her eyes. 
and say, well, you know, it's not easy being a woman. It's so much better if you have a man around who. Do you like that story? No. Okay. Want to rewrite it? It's hard. Yes, it is. It is. Why? Well, because you're 40 or 30 or 50, and it's the only thing you've ever known. Guaranteed the first couple of steps are going to be fascinating. <laughs> Oops. Ow. Ask me how I know. My dad was in the military. I grew up in that life. Guess what I do for a living? Not that. How hard is it sometimes? We don't have time for how hard that is sometimes. <laughs> I have to keep this down to under an hour. So the video today, my lovelies, is this. We have a story. We have several. They're on a loop. They're in our heads. We play it constantly. Sometimes the volume is so loud, we can't hear what anyone is saying to us. Sometimes we have that playing. We have something else going on that we're kind of fascinated by, and we're trying to do this because, of course, we can multitask. No, we can't. No, what we do is we jumble things back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Close proximity, close proximity. It's like driving in rush hour traffic. It's very, it's very stressful. And we wonder why we're exhausted and stressed and, and traumatized and, and burnt out and lying face down on the kitchen floor. Would we like a new lesson? Would we like a new story? Would any of us like me to show you how to hold the pen? That's pivotry in motion. All the things you are, by the way, by the way, by the way. If you're happy, <laughs> if you're happy, if you love your life, There's nothing to complain about. The story's working. You're good. There's nothing wrong. It's a perfect fit. Whatever story you're telling, if you're happy, if you have found the life and you wake up every day saying, that's the story. If you walk around shaking your head saying, I don't know why these things keep happening. It's because we allow them. It's because we're trying to cram them into a blueprint, a template, a story, a plot outline that isn't ours to own, that we weren't meant to be using. You know that scene in, in The Symptoms, Simpsons where Bart is writing a sentence 5,000 times on the blackboard? That's how often we listen to our loop tape. If that's how often we listen to our loop tape, how many times do you think we have to write down the new line to, to anchor it, to cement it, to replace it? For every action, equal and opposite reaction. I, I, don't, I don't know how you're so good at this. Well, I practice every day. How long have you practiced? My whole life. It's what I do. That's why it's what I do well. If what you do every day is complain, then that would be what you do well. Complaining is a, is a stalling tactic. While I'm complaining, nothing's happening. I can just keep doing this and keep complaining. Why don't people fix things if they know how to fix them? They don't want them fixed. So the object of the lesson today, my lovelies, is this. You can put all the lipstick on it you want. It doesn't change anything. 
The change is on the inside. Pivotry is not adding on. Pivotry is not reaching for. Pivotry is not doing more to be more, to win that. That is not pivotry in motion. That is someone chasing something. You know what happens when you chase a dog? They say, oh boy, and keep running. They think that's the game. The chasing is the game. If you keep saying over and over and over again, I just don't know why. I don't know why. Then that is your state. It is your state of confusion. You live in the state of confusion. How are the taxes? <laughs> How's the economy? In the state of confusion. Sucks, doesn't it? Or does it? Or does it? If it's not working and you don't like it, you have to let go of it. You have to thank it for the lesson, thanks for the memories, and set it free. Because if your hands are full of dates inside jars, you can't grasp anything else. You can't set you free till you set the dates free. You can't move on and grow if you keep allowing yourself to stay stuck, the decision is yours to make. Not alone. I'm right here. How you doing? I had this conversation with this uh, friend of mine who said, I don't know how you know this. <laughs> You're so smart. I don't know how you know this. These are... These are lessons I have learned at great cost, finally. And so I'm saying, hey, you know something? <laughs> it's really hot. <laughs> it's, really, it's really sharp. That's really heavy. Well, if it's hot, sharp, and heavy, let it go. Let it go. It'll be fine. Okay, that's it for today. It's a beautiful day in my neighborhood. I hope it's a beautiful day in your neighborhood. And if it isn't, you should have a serious sit-down conversation with the day and say, what is wrong with you? I expect more from you today, day. More from you. So until uh, Thor's Day, which is in two days, let's do this. Let's be good to us. What do you say? Let's give ourselves permission to let stuff go if it's not working. Let's give it a try. We deserve it. And remember to hug your loved ones. They deserve it too. I can't, I can't yet find the word, although I'm looking, to tell you how fabulous this is that you are doing these videos with me, that you are participating in this with me, that you are curious and excited about pivotry and the entire flower bloom that is unfolding. Because I think it's going to change a lot of things for a lot of us and make a lot of struggle easier. And I can't wait. And I hope you feel the same. Thank you for watching.